friend, let's look at budget-friendly laundry room updates you can do in one day or less. Often a small space, the laundry room often gets overlooked for decor and organizing opportunities. Let's dig in. What should we tackle first? I'll give you a second. Declutter, duh. As it turns out, decluttering is a lifelong marathon. We will never be done with it. Much like the laundry. That's why you gotta enlist the kids early, am I right? At least that's what all the experts say. I'm making these into yes. a pile. Yes. Thank you. My littles really loved loading the washer and the dryer and stuff, but over time that's not nearly as exciting. Mm -hmm. You did it! You did it! And if you have a laundry room right next to your mud room or garage like I do, other side of the door here, this laundry room can become a dump zone. You just kind of get in the door, drop down your things. It's a flat surface. It's close to my door. It's a lot easier than walking a few more feet and putting things away. So I just set them down, gather myself, and then... <laughs> and then come back and get them right. If you don't want that, then the first thing you gotta do is look at decluttering any of those flat surfaces. I focus on the flat surfaces because on a different day, I can tackle what's hidden away. And if we declutter our cabinets together on a different day, that'll be a great time for me to further detox my toxic products. I'm, I'm getting us there, but you know, it's a team effort. Next up, switch to daylight bulbs. Okay, this one is something that may be a little bit unexpected. Uh, there is a trend moving toward adding daylight bulbs in various rooms in your house, but oftentimes we hear about the office, maybe kind of bringing that sense of uh, natural daylight in when you don't have a window or something like that in a pantry. We're not hearing about it in the laundry room so much, but I really like this because if you spend that much time in your laundry room, I mean, you want a space that seems more inviting. And what's more inviting than sunshine or lemons? <laughs> Just thinking of that because I have some lemon DIYs in mind soon. Okay, actually, since I brought it up, I don't know if you've seen that um, citrus and other fruits are kind of having another resurgence right now, but I've seen some cool art with really like a, something that looks like it's painted like this and then just framed. So whether it's like an open frame or whatnot, but this, I actually picked up these placemats today at Hobby Lobby and I was like, I see potential. <laughs> Back to the tips. So. Anyway, if you switch to the daylight bulbs, it will definitely brighten your day. Am I right? Okay. And if you are, again, in the laundry room that often, or if you're me, and it might be days where you're passing through but not necessarily doing the laundry, I, I want it to be like a comfortable, enjoyable space. Add under cabinet lighting. So you can consider shedding a little extra light in the room by adding uh, battery operated or wireless under cabinet lighting and I think it's a great option especially even if you don't need the lighting it's just kind of fun I'm always looking for fun I'm an Enneagram 7 and the day I added puck lights in my master closet which it's right in here Anyway, it really transformed the space. And so if you want a quick way to change the vibe of a room, you can add something like um, self-stick puck lights or what do you think of my option? Do you like the fringe light? Hmm? What do you think? It's unexpected, yeah? When I saw this fringe light at Target, I was drawn to it like a mom. You just add batteries, click and stick. Usher in patterns with self-stick products. Speaking of self-stick, if you've been chewing on the idea of trying out adhesive-backed tiling panels, wallpaper, and the like, go for it already. You can use it above a utility sink like I did with the colorful backsplash wall sticker, apply decorative contact paper like I did on the Dollar Tree locker bins for my closet, and so on. They say you're supposed to show, not tell, so this is what they look like. 
by the way, if you like the listicle style video, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single one. All you gotta do is click that button. Anticlimactic, really. Oh, sure. Now it's gonna start. No, we'll just wait on you. Yeah, okay. There, there. Just click the button. It's that easy. Repurpose items for organizers. So as you can see, I have these antique mason jars. These were my grandma Dolores's, and looking a little full here with the buttons. So maybe I can have my kids go through and uh, take the packages apart to put the buttons in. They'll have fun with that, I'm sure. And no, we do not need all of these replacement buttons, but why not? It'll look really cute in the jar with all the buttons. Okay, how many times can I say buttons? Do you know how many times I already did? Let's count them. By now you can tell I like using things outside of their orthodox purposes. Let's focus on organizing our visible spaces with items we enjoy. Install hanging racks. Besides using ordinary things for unorthodox purposes, what else can you repurpose or use for hanging space? Challenge question, where is this white rack designed to be used? Let's see if you're right in a few seconds. So in our laundry room, I hooked up, I'm not gonna go as far as saying installed, I literally hooked up this drying rack so that I could go ahead and hang things in here. And I actually feel like it looks intentional. This is a very clean aesthetic look and I dig it. Gotta be honest, when I saw these collapsible storage bins on Amazon, I didn't actually have a place in mind for them, which you're not supposed to do that, right? Don't buy more storage things if you don't even have a purpose for them. Declutter instead of add more. I get it, I get it. But anyway, um, <laughs> these actually worked perfectly once I put them above my cabinets. So it just really felt like they clicked. And when you get to that clicking point, you know, that point where you're like, this is exactly it. It just clicks right in place like that last puzzle piece. You gotta love it. Now, of course, our needs change over time. We may not always want paper goods stored up there, but uh, I really liked it for quick access at times when we, uh, well, during the pandemic, we might have bought a few extra paper products. Now that I cleared my conscience a little bit, we can move on. The point is a laundry room makes a great utility room as well. So if you're not already using your laundry room to store excess light bulbs and things like that, uh, definitely cleaning products, you've got options, right? And that's why I think it's a great place for storing paper towels and things like that. If you don't have a large enough pantry or you don't have a bonus room to store it all, you get it. Add artwork. This one's easy. Just simply add artwork that you feel like goes with the current vibe of your space. I don't know if I will always want uh, this, you know, watercolor cacti motif, but it's fun. It's vibrant. Uh, I like the colors. They make me happy. They go together. And that's all that matters, right? As long as you like it. That took me a long time to learn that, so I feel like I have to pass that along. <laughs> And since this laundry room is maybe a third of the size of our last laundry room, it makes it very easy for me to switch out artwork and tchotchkes, things like that, um, as time goes on. So I feel like for somebody who's newer to design or they're like just kind of breaking into decorating their home and kind of introducing more colors or whatever it is, if you need a, a challenge space to get started, a laundry room just seems like a great safe space, right? It's it's in there with bathroom or like decorating a walk-in closet or something. Low risk. And after years of letting perfectionism cripple my design sense, I find it so freeing to just be able to have a space or two that I just try things out. Like, what's it gonna hurt? Um, I've done some of those experiments on a larger scale in the main parts of my home and I'm like, what was I thinking? But at least I was moving the ball forward. So I'm all about experiments and imperfection. Add decor. This is where I say again, I don't think anyone needs like high budget items to decorate their laundry room. Something may get broken. So you can consider what I did. 
I shopped my home for different items I wasn't using or even items that were in storage and I brought them in again. Like why, why not? Don't snooze on Dollar Tree. Look what I found. Like when would I get around to using the juniper wood that I was able to pick up at the Young Living Farm? I had it initially in my bathroom, but I was like, you know, it's, it, I don't necessarily need it for my bath to be able to have a chill environment, but this feels kind of fun in here. Just trying it out. I pulled these out of an apothecary jar that I had, and I really love the color and the texture. It'd be fun. Or what about lavender? What are we thinking, real or faux? As in, which one should I use? Real ones each time or stick with this? Another antique from another one of my grandmas. You truly don't know what you'll find when you start shopping your home. Let me show you these vases that we had on our fireplace. They were flanking either side of the artwork that we had for so long. And then, you see, you see? So what I'm gonna do is use the museum glass and secure the lid on top of them so they never fall. But it's just another fun option. And regarding the aforementioned brick holes, you can actually use museum gel you can get on Amazon, I'll link it below, to be able to secure items that you want out for decor, but you don't want to risk them getting knocked over or rumbling off and crashing to the floor. So I don't have it all figured out and I definitely have projects in the works between decorating, DIYs, and maybe adding in a few more random items for organization. I don't know. Okay, well thanks. If you wanna hit the like button, we can be sure to do some DIYs together, as long as you've subscribed.